Hey, we're gonna search this area. See what we come up with. That was intense. You cool? Yeah. Let's go find that radio tower. I'm cool. Cool as ice. Oh. Let's save Strop. Hey, maybe we can find something. Fine, I'm gonna kick his ass next time. Good. I was kind of curious what happened if I got too close to them. Like, was like, hey, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? How's it going, guys? So I just kind of held back. Eyes, Peel. Yeah. Solomon Grumpy's ears are burning. Way ahead of you, kid. <laughs> so as I was uh, telling Skip before we started, um, Henry is kind of... Um, the way Henry treats Sam is kind of like how Joel treated Ellie before she got the gun and stuff like that. If not, a little bit worse. Whoops. Wrong button. But, uh... Anyways, you'll notice when we first saw Henry and Sam in their first appearance, um, Sam had a gun on us. But you'll notice the way... If you go back and look at that video, the way that, um, uh... Henry takes the gun from Sam, it's kind of like, Whoa, wait, what are you doing having a gun? Give it to me. <laughs> it's just, even though he's holding the gun, he's pointing at the ground and being safe with it. He's kind of like, uh, I don't trust you with this gun. Oh, I didn't notice that, but then again, I'm not Texan, so. <laughs> Rules of the range, my friend. My trigger discipline is poor. Well, he was pointing at the ground. He didn't seem to be doing anything stupid. He was pointing at somebody, but that was when Joel was being kind of punchy. Which you don't, you <laughs> don't, you don't right. want to punch Joel. You'll just make him angry. Uh, pretty much. Oh, yeah. I like that Joel's Same. first impulse when they're like, let's split up and look for supplies, was to immediately eavesdrop on them. Yeah. <laughs> first time on a boat. <laughs> well, it's a little bit different in the water. One step at a time. Mm-hmm. So somebody came on shore leave. Let's see if they got some stuff in here. Yeah, but I mean, they never left the shore. Well, how do you know? Because the fucking boat's still here. Well, the people aren't here, sir. Well, they're probably dead. No, they're not. Let's, let's be. Not honest. they're not. No, they're not. There's a boat note. <laughs> this is <laughs> the, the introduction note. of a dude named Ish. He was on this boat, and from the from the sounds of it, it sounds like he was on the boat hiding out from the infected. And he's kind of like, okay, I'm out of food. Early. Boat's Another looking bad. Let's head back to shore. I, I really like Ish's comments when you go through and look at these, because he's got usually like a little, little bit of a dry wit or humor to it. It's kind of like, hey, if you find my skull, please don't step on it. That's like my number three fear. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the um, we're going to be finding a lot of entries by this Ish fella. Now, the guy's name, Ish, even though he's on a boat, I remember when this came up, and when I was looking at like game facts or various things, some folks were saying, "Oh, it's a reference to to Ishmael from Moby Dick because he's on a boat." It's like, no, there was a book that came out in the late '40s called "The Earth Abides." It's kind of like the granddaddy to a lot of post-apocalyptic settings, and I'll cover it a bit later in this update when we got time to kill. And trust me, we will have time to kill. Hmm. Oh, I get it. Oh well, killing and. And what I told you about before the video. Right. Oh, wait. Here's some chatter. I thought you might shoot him. Yeah, almost did. They're all right. I think it's good to have him around. I think you're right. You can see he's actually putting stock in her opinion now. Did everyone have boats back then? I had a 60-foot yacht. Really? No. Sarcasm. Making progress. Hee <laughs> hee. And they're joking around. Yep, Joel has a sense of humor. What? When did he find that? They must have salvaged it together. You know, you get you got to do something with all that manure and stuff that I'm not using on smoke bombs. So he, maybe he was so grumpy because he had just a severe vitamin deficiency. <laughs> yep, he had to he had to get his vitamin B and vitamin A up. Now he's all chipper. Look at that sunny disposition. He's just a glowing uh, a glowing bastion of positivity. That's that's not a grim death run. That's not a post-apocalyptic trot. No, yeah, he's walking on sunshine. I think we found some. Whoa. Uh, I think you found a, a, a teenager who could slide across the ground. <laughs> that's Darn an interesting kids these days. He's probably got those roller scoot things in his shoes. Oh, Heelys. Yep. 
the first time I saw that on a kid, it was like witchcraft, and everybody's like, whoa, you haven't seen those before? First time I saw those on a kid, the little bastard ran into me. <laughs> You're sort of like, wait a second, did he slip on the ice? Wait a second, there's no ice here. I don't understand. Wait, wait I'm inside of a mall. How is this possible? Quick time tapping. Working together. Yep. Next time on a very special My Two Dads, heading into a culvert. Well, you go in. okay. At least we're not two and a half men. If we were two and a half men, would, would Joel basically be um, a Charlie Sheen on a bad day? No, I think he'd probably be Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> is that show still going? Apparently it is. Oh my god! So TV does not learn lessons lightly. <laughs> we are in a sewer level. Oh. Great. Well, at least we're oh. not flooding. Think it. Warning. Joel, put it down. Put, put down the nail bomb. <laughs> gotta throw it. Gotta throw it. What's wrong with you, you crazy Texan? Gotta keep that throwing arm tip top, mister. He's gonna throw at his rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. He'll never play in the minors. Joel's minor league baseball. That'd be a more appropriate joke if we were in a cave. Waka waka! Alright, we'll check this side out. Mm. All right. Let's yeah, split up split and look for clues, gang. <laughs> I'm going over this way. I don't know, Roll. <laughs> <laughs> Zoinks! Sam's all like, Puppy Power! <laughs> That's right, Sam is Puppy Power. His brother knocks him upside ah. the head. Gotta find a different way. No, I ain't found is shit. Ellie Be the... Is Ellie, um, uh, Velma? I... Mm. Oh, hanging around. She's... She's... <laughs> Uh, his name was Robert Rigetti. Well, right. He didn't choose. He, he didn't choose the Rigetti way. He chose the wrong way. Oh, I'm stretching. Hey, he his, back to this. Hey, he got his head stuck between the bars, man. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that happened to my kid brother. He's gonna hang back when we were tiny. <laughs> got his head stuck in there and he couldn't get it out. Yeah. Of course, I didn't. I didn't find his pendant or his creepy doll. <laughs> Yep. So, I was looking for my waifu. Good heavens! <laughs> it's Ed Wynn doing the Skippy impression. I like it. Hey. Hey. Shanka, Shanka. It's a box. It's a red box. Oh man. It's right there too. You should rent a DVD. Ellie, go through that vent. <laughs> <laughs> no way! Yep. <laughs> Just this child labor. I love Joel's look yeah. here. He's kind of like, <sighs> stop complaining about a rat. Your superpower is that you're tiny, Ellie. Might as well make yourself useful. Mm -hmm. There's nobody around here for you to brick. Yep. Joel's just got to vent his frustrations. Actually, Ellie, Ellie <laughs> vented, I guess. Probably could have got through those bars if she ducked. <laughs> Quack. Uh, we get to see that little toolbox. It's a repaint from back when we were in the tilted buildings. Snap-on is a high-quality tool. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Just know. About to see how everything snap on. Out. Snap off. <laughs> the snapper. So festive. Ah, vitamins hey. and weed. Mm. I mean fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's for a grown boy. The thing like is, you can mix it together and make a really, really strong protein shake. Hey. Ah. Another note from hey. Ish. What's up, Ish? Tell us about the sewers. So, here's the thing. Um, Ish apparently started hiding in the sewers because it's a maze and he could lose people. And from how it sounds, because of how he says things went to shit pretty quick, like he was offshore for maybe a few months. It sounds like he did it while things were still fresh in the outbreak. Because he pretty much says, boy, leave here for a few months, come back, and everything's really shitty. Huh. You know what? Hmm. I, uh, I see now, g -Up, that uh, you had kind of a missed opportunity for a good thread title. Hey, this way! I, Looks like there's a pattern on the head. I love that line. Mankind is back to the food chain, baby! Yep. 
You see, he's got a little bit of charm in there. Ish is, back, is rapidly becoming my favorite. We're back. Yeah, we got like six, five or six letters from Ish, or dealing with Ish. So, we get to see exactly what happened around here through him. Jeez. Six letters in this game basically means that you could co-sign his mortgage. You're such good friends. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring up mortgages. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Look, the sign of a good DM no, is to always that. keep your players off kilter. Well, Play on their weaknesses. <laughs> don't, oh. St stand clear of moving platform. platform. What could we do? How do we get across? I don't know. Figure something out. Stand well, clear this platform moving platform, move. and maybe I'll figure it out. But stand the ass clear. Maybe there's a way we can use it. Mm -hmm. Could you give me another hint, please? Um, goes over there. Does it... And there's What's the generator. That? I'm not uh -huh. quite getting it. Ellie, could you give me one more hint, please? Can I get a lifeline, please? Can I call a friend? Can I call Ish? <laughs> Ish would definitely have all the answers. Jammed. It should just be like, dumbass, you should probably stand on that. Also, please don't step on my head. Yeah, don't stand on my skull. Y'all wait Come there. Mm. Y'all wait Let there. Let me see. There's something jammed in the door. Mm. Bicycle chain number one, nothing. Alright. Whoa! Ooh, getting used to water controls again. Ooh, heavens. That looks almost like a face. Couple of eyes. <laughs> Big old mouth. You've got a really strong sense for looking at faces, Mr. I see faces in hockey ice. Hey, I th those are legit. <laughs> you cannot unsee that Fu Man Chew once you've seen it. Or handlebars. Hey. hey. G so like I see Lemmy Killmeister. Hey, I see faces in a lot of things. Not in a crazy way. Henry, give it a shot. Alright, Henry, come on. Alright. Twist that wheel, buddy. Yeah, Henry, be of some use to me. Twist that wheel. Here's what I'm going to try out right here because I'm kind of curious. It doesn't have an invisible wall blocking you off until it comes all the way up. Oh. You just scoot on there whenever. Oh, any. He... Did he close it behind us? I forget. Yeah, we'll find out in a minute. So there's a roadway up there, it looks like. Oh, hey. But. It's quite a sinkhole. Yep, we are not interested in those highways and byways. We're exploring. Joel's not a rambling, gambling man. Mm -hmm. Now, let me see. <clears throat> oh, clickers. And, and hey, a pallet. All right. Uh -huh. Well, pallet is cool. Mm -hmm. Clickers, not so much. Let's go ahead and knock this in the water, clean it off. A bit quite literally a pallet cleanse. There we go. You know what that Thought means. Thought you could just skid along with that. <laughs> oh, what can I say? Now, hmm. Let me see what we have here. Hello. Hello, clicker. Mm. I thought he was wearing a trucker hat. For I a thought second. he was wearing a fedora when I first saw it. <laughs> fedora clicker. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay, and now we use the last use of that uh, shiv. So now we have one full shiv, which is good. Now, this guy. I was thinking about bricking him, but... But... No. Dang, son! Take that. Oh, yeah. Leave, leave the gun. Take the cannoli. So, um... I end up having to, uh, well, I'll explain in a moment, actually, because there's a note right here. <gasps> Ish. Trading note. Found Ish's dirty mattress. Yep. So right here, he says he finds some survivors who aren't aggressive, and judging by his tone, because he says, shocking, I know, that um, they didn't shoot at him, I'm guessing from his tone he's run strictly into hunters, and the fact that he found some friendlies is uh, rather interesting. And he kind of mulls over in the letter and says, Hey, you know what? I'm going to ask if I can join them. It sounds like they also have kids with them. Huh. So, might have a bit of a sewer community going here. This seriously seems like the kind of post-apocalypse where the big brothers of America just kind of rules the world. <laughs> Pretty much. 
Hey, quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. <laughs> well, I meant the charitable organization, but still. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you meant like quite literally the jerk big brother like um uh, like hunters. Just oh slapping no, man. You in the face. Quit hitting yourself, like you dork. These, <laughs> these roving bands of grown adults and and like tiny babies wandering the wasteland. There's there's Ellie's comment. Oh, this again. Let's go with. Yep. Oh, there you go. That's smart. Get on that raft, kiddo. The game makes fun of this raft mechanic coming up. They do it a couple oh, times. And Ellie, every time, just kind of like this again. Joel's just like, rafts are like bricks. They're everywhere, and we need to use them. <laughs> right. Let's see if that generator still got some juice. Good no, rafts nothing. like a good brick. You don't oh, yeah, it's a generator. Guess gotta... what's going to happen? It's going to turn the lights on and... Everything is going to attack? Right. Actually, no, nothing attacks. <sighs> this game gets me every time. I keep wanting something horrible to happen, and it never does. So, um, I ended up a little bit after this. I missed an optional conversation, and I had to load the chapter. Thankfully, if you do chapter select, the game remembers what you had equipment-wise. But there's going to be like a slight discrepancy in that my revolver, I picked up two rounds off that quicker. When I ran through and did this again, I didn't get that drop off him. But the thing that the thing that really bothered me is there are several achievements I was hoping on getting in this playthrough, but uh, if you load chapter, it apparently negates them. Oh no! So, the achievement for hearing all the puns, I don't get it. No! No! Well, I get the puns, but I didn't get the achievement. Alas! Damn it! I was, I was, I was gonna make that joke. Well, I had to I steal it. I had to dismantle did. it. <laughs> you're, you're just, you're a pun bandit. Yes, uh, I am. <laughs> I'm a pun pundit and a pun bandit. Maybe. Hey, they got a Maybe castle painted on the wall. No other choice. That is kind of adorable, actually. Yep. But of course, that's the way we want to go, and that's not the way we're going. No. Because Joel likes his tools and his pills. Tools. Far out, like, there are tools. I like how he doesn't take the toolbox. He's just stuffing all these into his pockets. Joel's got a bunch of pockets. Yep. That's fine. Pretty sure I saw, saw jumper cables in there, too. Ooh, handy. Probably, probably not. I, I kind of play around with the flashlight here because it kind of obscures some of these drawings. But yeah, they got a bunch of chalk and paint drawings here by kiddos. And judging by the castle thing here, and the fact that this isn't going to be like a Dead Space style haunted daycare. Oh, no. alarm! At least, not that we here. think right now. Don't look like that's the case anymore. <sighs> who would stay in here? Mm -hmm. Someone who thought they could keep a place like this safe. House yeah. rules. Oh man. There's a friend of mine on Facebook, and she moved in with somebody over on the West Coast, and apparently the um, the roommate, I think it's like three or four girls or something, but one of them is like a real big stickler on rules, and she actually has a rule sheet of paper on a wall somewhere, and it's oh. really stupid shit. And also, she, she doesn't do then and than correctly, so every time she writes one of these... Oh. <gasps> Oh, looky, looky. Oh, a street sweeper. Hello, handsome. It's called the shorty. I bet it is. But anyways, the lady who writes the rules is very bad at writing. I just saw something like that recently. Also, remember how I said I had to load that's right where it was? Because I missed the uh. conversation over here. Huh. Awesome. Ellie. Uh, calm down. Hey, Sam. Yeah. Stand by those posts over there. Sorry. Okay. Ready? Okay, do it. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> Henry, did you see that? Let's keep it down, buddy. Okay. I was getting ready to scream goal. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> At Joel just flips out, rips his shirt off, starts running around in circles, <laughs> dropping to his knees. No, he drops to his knees, then he strips off his shirt. <laughs> like, go! Oh! Hey. Now... They're done talking. Look at this. Bomb. Bomb upgrade. Did you know that Imp putting bombs radius. inside of inside of a closed space will make them blow up better? Whoa. 
Did you know that simply burning gunpowder does not create a big explosion? Fire powder, hot. <laughs> fire indeed, hot. <laughs> yes, fire indeed, hot. <laughs> Playtime is fun time. Uh oh. You hear that? Thanks for not calling them zombies, because zombies are ridiculous. Zombies. Zombies. Zumbas. You want to stay oh, in shape? You gotta take Zumba class. You gotta. Zumba's also that weird game by those pop cap guys, I think. Oh, hello. Oh, hey, buddy. Wow. Yep. The uh, the nice thing about the shorty is it does not use standard shotgun ammo. What? So you do not have to worry about juggling your resources. That's that's kind of awesome. That is very good. Well, I guess we know what happened to these people. So you know there was a clicker. They've been gone for a while. We keep moving forward. All we can do is hope there aren't any more of them. Doubtful, but no. Uh, I really like the shorty. I don't know why, but I just like it more than the shotgun. Maybe just because it's cool. It, it kind of reminds me of the pistol from uh, from Uncharted 2, which is basically a sidearm that was, well, could one-shot a lot of things. Ooh, ooh, also, also, wait for it. Wait for it. Pork and beans! Dan... Dan Joe's. Dan Joe's, Dan Dan Joe's, Joe's pork, pork and beans. beans. That is a pretty fucking hillbilly name. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Boudreaux got himself some uh, some of them canned pork beans. Woo-wee! And a full-on water distillery. Sheesh. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Taking a rest. Gross. Sleeping on the job. Mm -hmm. Ah, rain catcher note. And here we have... Uh, we have him writing something to this lady named Susan. He's got all sorts of little emoticons drawn all over it. <gasps> He's happy facing at this lady. Now, um, they're talking about, you know, collecting rainwater in here and using and stuff. And just from the tone he's taken, it could mean that he's trying to put the moves on old Susan. It could be. Yep. The fastest way to, uh, to let a lady know that you're interested is to compliment her uh, survival techniques. Yeah. Rainwater collection, that's a hell of an idea. It's like, hey, how, how you doing? Um, I'm, I'm Skippy, I just wanted to say I, uh, I, I really think that you're good at starting a fire. These pipes are polished to a mirror sheen. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> hey, more rules. Secure zone. Move your jacket or outerwear. Personal pointed or sharp objects are allowed. No personal object. No, none of those sharpie things are allowed. Everybody's Aww. all kiddified over here. But my lucky machete. Sorry. My old man gave it to me. Can't use it here. Gotta leave it behind. Oh, man. Now, here's where things get even darker. Oh, no. <sighs> oh, they... They didn't suffer. Oh, that's good, I guess, all things considered. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's basically a daycare in here. They, uh, they had kids, huh? Oh, yeah, they had a lot of kids. Ish missions at, uh, in passing with them having kiddos. And this right here... Some dude named Kyle. It sounds like Ish was separated from him, but most of the folks at this point were dead. He also says that uh, he indicates killing the children, that he said he'll make it quick if it comes down to it. Right. Jesus. Well, yeah. So, yeah, there were a whole lot of kids here. The, um, the rain catcher note, Ish said to Susan that uh, he you know, gave the kids water, and they were actually using it in water guns. And he was kind of like, is that okay? Is it, is it going to upset you? Because that's my fault. But, yeah. So, 
looks like infected got in here and things went south. Part of it probably being that they nobody really had weapons outside of a few protectors, so to speak. If only they'd let them have personal pointed objects. I know, those personal machetes could have helped. Could help so much. That's really sad. Yep. Hey, you think that leads out? Could be. It's too high for a boost. Maybe there's another way to get there. Who'd have thought this post-apocalyptic story would take a dark turn? Mm-hmm. In the sewer level of all places. Up, 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 Hits up, just up. keep on coming. Oh. At least there's some alcohol to salve our wounds. Yep. Can we make anything? But they won't salve my emotional wounds! <sighs> Eh, eh. I have to leave it behind. You are pretty low on booze, sir. <sighs> Drowning my sorrows too much. John, was that denatured alcohol? Shut up! Denatured, because I ain't drinking it yet. Then it'll be within <laughs> my nature. That's not what it means, Joel. <laughs> Don't care. Whoops. Oh. <sighs> Whoopsie. Looks we got a bit of a switcheroo here. That was me. I must have triggered some kind of safety gate or something. Let me see if we can lift this. Tonight on Dad Swap. Oh. This is awkward. Yeah. I know. It's like every time. Now where do these guys come from? She looked to her man. left, which should have been a closed grating or the wall. Sam, yeah. You stay close to him. Henry, we gotta fucking move. You keep him safe. Go. But, yeah, they come out of nowhere, a few of them drop down behind, and they chase them beside the stairwell, which there was no way out of, unless yeah. they went under the stairs somewhere. Are, are Henry and Ellie dead now? Fine. Yep, game's over, sorry. Oh, well. All right, come on, kid. See if we can find a way out of here. That's the old switcheroo. Ellie's on all the box art, but Sam's the true mm -hmm. hero. Okay. So, this part right here is probably my, mo my most hated encounter of the game. Not due to difficulty, but because, well, it's broken. There are a lot of infected, it is almost impossible to stealth through it, and if you head out in the open, you're gonna get swarmed. To make things worse, their pathing is, like, broken. So, whilst I am just, you know, causing all sorts of mayhem, I'm gonna be talking over this, and you can just kind of watch what's going on. There is a lot of editing here. It's just I could not make this clean, basically, and I was really aggravated with it. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I was going to talk about the Earth Abides with Ish. Stay oh. behind me. If I run, you run. Yeah. Yeah, I, I spoiled it. Infected her right here. Whatever. Meh. Anyways, the Earth Abides is kind of the granddaddy of post apocalyptic media. It was made back in, like, 1949, so, you know, it predates all of the zombie movies and such. But, uh, it has a number of basic items in its story, which you'll see... Yeah, I goofed up the stealth thing right here. I, I left that in, actually, to show how overly touchy they were on detecting you. I was around the corner, and she freaked out. But... Anyways, this is the real run. And you'll see me putting down explosive things repeatedly and they never pan out and I have to move them. But anyways, the story of The Earth Abides, it's based around someone named Isherwood Williams. You'll notice the letters we were picking up were from a dude named Ish. He was also called Ish in the books. So it starts off present day, which was 1949 at the time. He's bitten by a rattlesnake while he's off in the mountains. He's doing some geography related grad student work. And he returns to his cabin where he goes into a coma, essentially. When he wakes up sometime later, kind of like a Rip Van Winkle thing to some degree, the entire world apparently got its shit, its shit kicked in by some disease. And this is uh, almost near, extin near extinction for mankind. Now, the whole thing of him being in a coma and waking up when things are ruined, that's basically the hook of like The Walking Dead and 28 Days Later. Because, you know, a person wakes up and it's like, where'd everybody go? But, uh, anyways, Ish moves around. He goes from New York to California. 
and after settling on the west coast, he tries to build up society doing like education and stuff and teaching kids, but it doesn't make any headway. And uh, at one point, he has a son named Joey who really takes after him very strongly and, you know, is basically kind of like he's going to lead the future generations. Well, thing is, um, uh, where was I? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, no. So trying to rebuild society. Um... Oh, oh, okay. So he's got this son named Joey, right? And he's basically Ish Jr. to every degree. And thing is, one day some dude shows up at their encampment. And not only is the dude kind of a scumbag, but he's also carrying typhoid. So it's almost exactly like the whole thing they use in zombie tropes of somebody being infected and getting in there. Essentially, it kills a bunch of people, including Joey. So, after Joey dies, there's like a 20-year gap, and the younger folk are a lot more in tune with nature. And they're pretty decent survivors. Now, something that's kind of neat about this is Ish carries around some field hammer. Kind of what's, what miners use at the time. Kind of like a mattock or a field pick. I'm not sure which. Right. But uh, the younger generation is uh, superstitious. Because Ish is from the old guard. He's like one of the old, only old people still alive. And they basically see him as a god of sorts. And the hammer is basically... Nobody wants to touch it because they think it's a symbol of godhood. Right, they, they revere the Americans yeah. sort of in the same way Assassin's Creed those pre Yeah, pretty much. But the thing is, they, um, they listen to him, but they don't really take him seriously at times. Because they think they know better. Now, you fast forward to, uh, yeah. and uh, fight's over. It was a shitty fight. Lots of editing. But the uh, story fast forwards to Ish's twilight years, and he's kind of seen as a relic. Because, you know, he's incredibly old, he's going senile, and he's typically out of touch with reality. And before he dies, he gives his hammer to his great-grandson, Jack, who is supposed to be pretty similar to Joey in some regard. And it kind of it ends with him wondering if the world is a better place or a worse place, ultimately. But it also kind of boils down to let's not repeat our mistakes and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big sucker for that kind of... Uh, thematic exploration of, of the post-apocalypse. I really like the stories that take place long after civilizations collapse. Well, yeah, the um, just from reading up on summaries and g general gists of things, this this really kind of gave me a fallout sort of feel to some degree, and not the, not the goofy way, but kind of how you get the future generations coming into it and mixing with the folks who were around previously. Yeah, for sure. It's... Um... It's, there's a really good quote in uh, on the Wikipedia page for this book that I just pulled up. Mm -hmm. uh, the society is so small that the death of one member, a little boy named Joey, seems likely to determine for many generations to come whether the emerging society will or won't be literate. As Ish thinks of it, each new baby is a candle lit against the dark. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Fucking beautiful, man. Oh, yeah. Which, if folks like this, one book that I have read that this is kind of kind of compared to is Alas, Babylon. And this is kind of the forecursor, or precursor of post-apocalyptic thingos. Looks like it. And Alas, Babylon is kind of like a worst case. No, it's an empty toolbox. Alas, Babylon's kind of like a worst case approach to um, uh, nuclear holocausts and such. It is really interesting. It takes place over kind of a pretty small amount of time, but I believe they're over in Florida is where it happens. And that you know, there are people who die from the immediate outburst one of the i think it's the main character's son or nephew one of the two he basically was looking off in the distance where a bomb went off and he's blinded for most of the book okay or rather the kid is but uh you know you see people trickle in from the outside they have metal and stuff and they carry um uh you know irradiated metals with them oh shower rules have showers Hey, all right. Where are your flippy floppies? Yep. And there's also something over here for the porta potties. We'll look at that in a moment. Ooh. Uh, I need to read a last Babylon again. That was I really like that. I'm uh I'm I'm on Amazon right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, there's another really good one that I wanted to talk about. Um, cover, uh, cover with sawdust. Cover. Go oh, clean up after yourself. Save toilet paper. Uh huh. No cutting hair. Yeah, don't do that in the toilet. That's <laughs> gross. It clogs it up. It's disgusting. Um, but uh, just just really really quickly, another really good one about sort of the collapse of society and the deification of of the precursors is a book called A Canticle for Leibowitz. Never heard. Of Which it. is about this? Uh, it's oh, it's fantastic. It's um, it's it's more or less about this uh, this group of monks who are devoted to uh, yeah, to nice. transcribing. It's like a classroom. Why can they keep it safe? Son, I wish I knew. God knows they didn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. Um, to transcribing the uh, the works of this electrical engineer uh, by the name of Leibowitz. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all stuff like his schematics and, and things like that, trying to preserve what scraps of, uh, of knowledge exist, uh, exist in the world after the collapse of society. So, um, they end up finding by accident, um, Leibowitz's shopping list, (laughs) which becomes this, you know, holy relic because it's the first new writing by the saint. Is it Um, kind of like the gods must be crazy to some degree or... It kind of is, except it's... Oh, oh! here's something else we see here. Some dude named Danny and Ish are the only Ish people... Ish a handsome man. Yeah, look at Ish. Oh, man. But wow. they're the only dudes who have weapons, it looks like. Huh. Um, but anyway, it's, it's, it's a really good book. It's, it's kind of an interesting examination of when all else is lost. Um, mm-hmm. You know, does society keep creating new knowledge and new ideas, or... Is it this sort of rear guard action to try and preserve oh, yeah. what's left of the past? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Which is which is pretty fascinating because it seems like The Last of Us um, draws a lot of inspiration from, I think the you know three books that we've talked about. And how old is that there one? Do you know offhand? Or? Good job. Uh, Chemical for Leibowitz is let's see, it came out in the sixties. Oh. sixty one. I don't know when the last Babylon came out. Probably around then. Uh oh. Come on. Oh. It's our buddies. Nothing over there. The last Babylon was 59. Oh, oh, sounds about right. Uh oh. They were super. Oh. They were super popular. Yeah, apparently. Some friends. And also, I have almost no ammo. Get away from the door. I've got a melee weapon with uh, two one-hit kills to it. So we're gonna have to make this work. Uh oh, venting. I'm saving the goddamn day, man. Yeah. Quick thinking, kid. Get your get that stick out of your ass, Henry. Yell at him later after you're not dead. Exactly. Oh, I have almost nothing. You've gotten by with less. <laughs> yep. I'm not worried because I know that Ellie is going to magically find 12 shotgun shells. She doesn't. Oh, <laughs> damn it, Ellie. Nope. This is a white... Just like this Joel, a, I found another shorty. This is a white knuckle little round here. Okay, there's a bat. I'm making note of that bat because I might burn through this melee weapon fast. Here, oh, and a Molotov, Get beautiful. Yeah. You okay. got this. They're gonna be boosting th- over there and getting the open door open. The Make it fast. Come on, Sam. Meanwhile, okay. What about you? I'll be fine. Come on, go. Let's go with the shorty. One shot of this is probably better than two with the handgun. Yep. Just gotta time it right. Okay. Alrighty. What do we got? I'm gonna try and avoid using this if possible. One use. Yep. Okay, I lied. Click All right. Oh, yep. Damn it. One more. Okay, grab the bat. I am really impressed that you were able to go toe to toe with the clicker. The main thing is just getting the first whack in. Oh, you keep him back to it, and it's okay. Yep. Okay, they got the door open. I'm not falling for it this time. Ha, you did Watch it. Watch how slowly they sneak out the door. 
Hold on, guys. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Remember what I was saying about um, uh, The Walking Dead? Taking, um, uh... Or rather, have you ever seen the game The Walking Dead? Yes. Well... Look at this. Warning. Infected inside. Do not open. Thanks for the warning on the other side, guys. Yep. So where's this tower? Womp womp. We're close. Come on, let's go. Man, is my face red. 